Hey guys, it's Joyce and today I'm really excited to share with you how you can take some self-timer photos with things that you probably have at home, specifically a bed sheet and a mirror. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to set up a little photo studio makeshift, how to display your props, some posing tips, and a little bit of Photoshop as well. First, I'm going to create a makeshift studio backdrop with some old white bed sheets. I find that bed sheets or quilt covers make great backdrops and can completely transform a space. A plain white bed sheet is also a very effective light reflector and doesn't cause any harsh shadows. I simply used masking tape to secure the bed sheet on the wall and it holds up really well without chipping the paint on the wall after you shoot. Next, grab a plant and place it on one side. I used my pot of calla lilies here and wrapped the bed sheet around the pot to create the illusion of a wrapped up gift or like it's growing out of the set. To keep things light and fresh, I prepped a delicious melon and cut it into half to use it on the set. As you can see, I've opted for a one color palette with a plant, fruit, and my outfit against the white bedsheet backdrop. I love working with natural lighting shining through my window since it's the easiest and gives the most natural feel to the photos. I also love the simplicity of this set. The white drapey sheets are very subtle with a soft touch yet the hints of green create a huge impact with pops of color, which is very eye-catching. The app I am using for this self-timer shot is a Sony app called Imaging Edge Mobile. I find it really easy to use with my Sony camera, and I use the two-second self-timer setting. It's really great because I get to preview every shot on my phone if I want to. In this particular shot, I wanted to create a soft and relaxed look since I'm lying on the bed. I find that poses where I'm playing or touching my hair adds a very natural human touch. It's also one of my favorite poses because it's also a natural habit I have. So it doesn't seem forced or too posy if you know what I mean. Stacking props you have can also add more dimension to your photos. You can also try capturing a shot in motion so that a photo looks more candid. The reason I picked an oversized blazer for this shot was to add some structure in contrast with the light feeling you get from the draped bed sheets and plant. The green also adds this fun and whimsical feeling to this photo. I find that switching up a pose like lying on your side to lying on your back can also give a completely different feeling. Again, placing your hands on your body and face adds more of a human touch and is very natural. Just make sure to keep your fingers relaxed as if they're touching a piece of cotton fluff. The live view you see from my phone is just a simple screen recording from my iPhone while I have the app open. Next, I'm going to work with the mirror I had lying around because it was an old bathroom mirror from Ikea. I made sure it was clean and dust free before using it since the dirt details might be picked up from the camera. I laid the mirror flat on the table and set my camera angle high enough so I can see my own reflection. If you don't have a tripod, you can also try propping the camera on top of a chair with lots of books. As you may have realized, I like shooting a lot of my photos portrait since it captures more of the body and also ideal when posting on social media. Remember what I mentioned with soft fingers? Here I'm doing the same, 
and lightly touching the mirror so it looks like it's floating. Placing my arms in front of me also creates dimension. This adds a lifelike or realistic quality to the image. I really like experimenting with angles to see what works best. If a front view doesn't work, try a side angle. The reflection from the mirror also changes depending how close you are to it. As you can see, the light that bounces off the mirror also does wonders to light up your face and eyes. Later in this video, I will also share how I extend the mirror in Photoshop, so you can also achieve the same look if you want to in your photos. A nice trick is to try looking at the camera and lens in the mirror reflection. This gives the illusion that there are two of you in the image. With this image, for instance, you can also try to flip the image to make it look like your mirror reflection is looking back at the camera. A simple trick to add more height in photos is to add a pillow on whatever you're sitting. This gives more elevation so more of your torso is reflected in the mirror. Finally, I'm going to transfer all the images to my laptop. In this next section, I will be sharing how I Photoshop the mirror to look bigger and infinite. This is the selected image I want to retouch in Lightroom. As you can see, this is the edited and unedited version I have side by side in the develop panel. So now I'm going to open this image in Photoshop by right-clicking the image and select Edit in Adobe Photoshop 2020. This is the latest version of Photoshop at the moment. Select a copy with my Lightroom adjustments and click Edit. So the edits from Lightroom are all transferred. Once in Photoshop, click on the Quick Selection tool on the toolbar panel. I use this to easy select any area that has very similar color shades and a defined shape. Now just zooming in to get more details. Now once the area is selected, click on edit at the top panel and slide to content aware fill. This section will pop out with the green highlights indicating which areas of the photo you want to clone from. Since I only want the bits from the mirror, I'm simply clicking and dragging away the details I don't want the areas to be cloned from. The image on the right shows a preview of what the cloning slash content aware fill will look like. Once I'm happy with the result, I'm going to click on OK. And once you're back in the editing panel, click Command D on Mac or Shift D on Window to deselect. Selecting the clone tool on the left, hold down Command and click on the area you want to clone stamp from. Then glide the brush along the harsh edges to blend the colors. As I get closer to my arm, I'm shrinking the brush by scrolling down with my mouse so I don't clone over the blazer sleeve. Next, bring the opacity to around 35%. Here, I'm blending in the shadows that look a little off. This part can seem a little tedious, but it's essential to make the blend realistic. 
Now I'm going to do the same procedure as before with the right side. And on this side, I'm going to use the lasso tool to draw. Now carefully carving out the section I want to content aware, basically I'm implementing the same technique I just used, so I will speed up the process here. Once I'm happy with the result, I'm going to click save and it should transfer directly back into Lightroom. And there you have it! That's how you Photoshop a small mirror to create the illusion of a bigger and infinite mirror in Photoshop. I would love to know which ideas you also plan to try at home, so comment in the section below. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!